without getting into the political aspects. It cannot be denied that the German war machine during the Second World War was an impressive operation that relied on cutting-edge technology, and in many cases with technology way ahead of its time. But regardless of all that, the Allies, and in specific the Americans, counted with a more powerful advantage that allowed them to increase their production capacity beyond what their enemies could ever foresee. Their secret weapon was called Statistical Process Control, also known as SPC charts. SPC charts were developed by Dr. Deming together with Dr. Schuhart during the 1920s and the 1930s, and this approach attracted the attention of the American Department of War, an approach that led to a dramatic improvement to the quality and hence capacity of their production system. This picture, for instance, is Ford's Willow Run assembly plant and illustrates the famous A bomber an hour. That is a production tack time for aircraft that has never been seen before. Such capability allow the U.S. to prevail during those hard times. Unfortunately, or at least to the American industry, once the war was over, so were, was their interest towards Dr. Deming's concepts. But the opposite happened in Japan, a country whose industry was completely devastated by war, was in desperate need to revamp their economy. Dr. Deming was invited to lecture management principles that included the statistical process control management, and he accepted. This relationship with Japan endured for many years, and Dr. Deming was continuously lecturing on this novelty approach towards manufacturing. In words of Dr. Deming, the Japanese didn't only learn the new approach, but absorb it it became an embedded element in their pursuit to revamp their industry. Dr. Deming was really celebrated in Japan, yet his doings attracted very little attention by his fellow countrymen. After a couple of decades, the results in Japan were dramatic. Made in Japan became synonymous with the highest quality in the world. Industry by industry became dominated by Japanese enterprises. First, with the manufacturing of cameras, once dominated by German companies. Then, with watches, formerly dominated by the Swiss. Then, all sort of consuming electronics like TVs, radios, cars, motorcycles, all formerly dominated by American brands. On June 24, 1980, Americans view an NBC documentary called If Japan Can, Why Can't We? A TV show that is, by the way, now available thanks to the Deming Institute. The program featured Dr. Deming, and viewers were shocked to learn that the individual behind all that impressive transformation behind the Japanese industry, yes, was an American. This time, people listen. Close to the end of the program, the interviewer asked Dr. Deming, would the same method work in the US? Deming replied, was the catalyst for the persistent request for Deming to help the American industry to catch up. Soon icons such as General Motors, Ford, Xerox, Dow Chemical, among many others, were asking for his help. In this series of lectures, we will take you by the hand in presenting you to this fascinating approach that changed it all. First, we will start by defining what are the so-called Three Sigma control charts. Then, how to select the right control chart. Yes, because there are more than one type. How to construct a control chart and finally how to read and interpret the visuals that our control chart display. 
Having said that, let us start and here we go. <laughs> 